What is up guys and welcome back to another Gran Turismo Sport video. Yesterday we did the Nations Cup and today we're doing the Manufacturer Series. However, I'm not signed to a manufacturer so that is what I'm going to do today. Uh, we're going to pick a brand. Uh, obviously there are benefits uh, to weigh up as to which manufacturer I go with. Um, so I'm just going to take a look at the various um, cars that are on offer. I'm going to look at the obvious ones like Audi, BMW, Ferrari, Mercedes, McLaren, etc. You know, all the big ones. Um, so yeah, we'll weigh up our decision based on that. But uh, I've been reading your comments and I've, you know, a lot of you guys have been saying I need to calm down with my overtaking and stuff and I will endeavor to do that in today's episode. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But a choice in the end had to be Audi. Uh, you know, for obvious reasons, really. So, we're going to go with Audi, and we're going to take them to glory, potentially. Or, they'll take me to glory. Hopefully. We'll see. Boom. I am now married to Audi and I am never allowed to drive any car ever again for the foreseeable future in human history. All right, so manufacturer series. Uh, we are doing the 640 race around the Austrian Grand Prix. So this should be a good one. Um, a lot of tire wear to come into this. So I'm hoping that the Audi is decent on tire wear. We know that the R8 isn't great. I'm hoping that the TT, which we're driving today, which is a, a Group 4 car, can be the contrary to that. But, I don't know, let me know in the comments what the best manufacturer is. And I have some idea of, like, what's decent and, you know, what's, you know, not very good. But I'd just love to hear your, you know, thoughts and opinions. Basically, anything about Gran Turismo, even, like, the way I'm driving or anything, you know, I wouldn't normally accept help, at least on the F1 game, so I feel like I know what I'm doing, but... When it comes to Gran Turismo, I'm still very much learning, so any advice would be much appreciated. But um, yeah, here we are. Just like yesterday, this is uh, somewhat of a competitive race. This is how, you know, you qualify for Gran Turismo Esports. You have to be put in the best split, which we are not, obviously. We're, we're quite a way down. We're still in B class, but I'm endeavoring to you know, consistently improve, to consistently deliver. And my driver rating each day that I log onto the game is going up in, in the majority of the races that I do. Um, so that's that's always a positive. But I've still got a long way to go when it comes to actually comparing myself against some really good players. Like any A-class or S-class driver, I'm still one or two seconds off the pace and I need to do some soul searching in order to find that level of performance. But I feel like the more I play the game, the more secrets that I will unlock. But uh, we cross the line. It's P9 in this. Uh, one thing that's crucially worth mentioning is I actually did that on the hard compound of tyre. So this race, you have the choice of all the tyre compounds, soft, medium, and hard. For some reason, I couldn't change to the softer compounds. I feel like maybe I needed to do that in the warm-up. But I couldn't do that in qualifying. And I couldn't do that for the race either. So we'll be starting the race on hards. And we'll be slow at the start, but I feel like we'll come on stronger as the race goes on. But um, as this title suggests, this is going to be a race worth watching. It's race time. It's the Austrian Grand Prix. It's Tim and Mardu commentating for you today on today's 
GT Sport Manufacturer Series. I got slated in the comments yesterday. Apparently I meant to put like a meme intro over the FIA stuff. I don't know if that's just like what everyone does or if that's just what Steve does. I didn't want to go ahead and copy Steve. But you know, for my first outing in both nations and manufacturers, we'll show the bare intro so that everyone has some context. But here we go. First race in the Manufacturer Series, driving the Audi TT. And uh, we shall see if we can carry this manufacturer to glory. Very interesting though, that I was the only Audi in the field uh, in this lobby. There was um, a lot of other you know, BMWs, uh, a couple of McLarens, uh, a few Mercedes here and there. So uh, yeah, it was just very interesting to make comparisons against other people. I didn't really have a, someone to measure myself up against being in the same car and, and being having someone to you know measure up against in the same car is very very important because it's various amounts of tire wear, you know, fuel burns at different rates in different cars. There's so many different characteristics to think about as we see that Mercedes. <laughs> dangerously rejoin the circuit there uh, thankfully not taking either of us out but we pretty much hold station with where we started in this race we moved up into p9 we're trying to pull a move on the mercedes here that's uh i think porsche ran wide at turn four and uh, he's gone flying off we get overtaken by the subaru but we're going to swiftly overtake him back if we can as he goes around the outside into the middle sector no it looks like he's going to have the grip to hold on to that one so at this stage in the race we're fighting with people who are on softer compound of tires i'm just doing my best here to hold on to uh whatever track position i've got at the moment but i'm massively slower than say those around me i'm just trying to utilize some consistency and the slip strength to stay with these guys while i've got the slower tire on and then after you know the first five six laps you know, the race will really start to open up for us as we get a bit of a push from behind from the Citroen, I think it was. And uh, that bump draft got me in front of the Subaru, so I was very grateful for that. Into P7. Next up is the BMW, who has got a 5 tenth penalty, which will serve on the back straight. So that'll be an easy P6 for us. Don't exactly need to overtake this guy. However, we do have the overspeed on him, so we're going to do it anyway. Up the inside, into turn 3. And that is us now up in a P6. So, yeah, we're looking good at this stage. As long as we can hold on to Slipstream and, um, you know, not let the leaders get away too much, then we won't leave ourselves with too much to do at the back end of the race. You know, given that I started in P10, um, I feel like the hard compound was probably the right choice to make anyway. This is always a good strategy in the F1 games. As if you're bur buried in traffic, you may as well put the slower tire on because... You're only going to get held up in, in traffic anyway, and you'll be battling people, and there's no... I don't know, I feel like it's a bit of a waste to chuck on the fastest tyre, only to get held up by other people. Whereas, we'll put it on at the end of the race, and then we'll use that to charge towards a podium, or hell, even a race win if we're lucky. But, um, yeah, I think it's 15 times tyre wear, so tyres are not going to last too long around this place. I think the, the hards will go about seven, eight laps before they start to drop off a bit. Mediums um, will do, I don't know, five, six laps. And then the, the softs are really only good for like three or four laps, maybe five at a push. Um, so yeah, the tires really do go off quite badly. But uh, one thing I didn't realize when I was doing this at the time is, you know, there's not, there's not it's hard to explain. I feel like it's better to just run the softer compounds longer than, than what it is to stick out the hard compound tire longer. Because the hard tire doesn't exactly have the the residual grip that the other compounds do. But it doesn't exactly... It lasts longer, but not much longer, if that makes sense. I, if you're a regular player of this, you could let me know and give your feedback on that. But that's just kind of the gist I got from this. The hard compound tire wasn't great. It was just very slow, despite having very high tire wear in this race. I feel like the medium was probably the best race tire to utilize um, in this particular scenario. And that's our first pit stop out of the way. We rejoin in P14. We've got um, nine laps to go in this race and we still need to run the medium and the soft. So this manufacturer series or this race at least uh, requires you to run all three compounds, which is something that has been teased a lot in Formula One in the past as a regulation. 
um, but we're, we're seeing it unfold here in Gran Turismo, and I've got to say, it really adds to the to the strategy elements. We'd love to see that implemented into maybe F1 Esports at least. But anyway, we uh, rejoin pretty much line astern with the Mercedes who we were battling earlier on in the race. He was on the medium tyre in the first stint. He's now on the hard compound, whereas I'm now on the medium and my pace is much better than his. We saw past him uh, pretty easily and now we're going to see if we can break away from him as best we can. 1.1 seconds is the gap to him behind. A Ferrari makes their stop and uh, we're you know, elevating towards the front of the grid now. We only have the faster compounds to utilize for the rest of this race, whereas those in front of us at best only have the medium or the hard to use. So we're really gonna make a charge here towards the front. Next up is the McLaren. And at this point, it's really hard to gauge what's happening with strategy. I don't know if these guys have even made a stop yet, or if they have, how old their tires are. There's a lot of question marks up in the air, but one thing I do know is that we're not going to be slowing down in a hurry as we go around the outside of that McLaren. I actually thought he was going to make a pit stop there, but turns out he stayed out. He was taking a really weird line into the penultimate corner. We go up in a P4 anyway and set a personal best of the race, being a 1 minute 38.3. Here's the replay around the outside. He took a really narrow line in and was not really carrying much speed. So I, I honestly just thought he was going into the pit lane. That's why I kind of overtook him off the circuit. But uh, we carry on. P3 there has done an Igor Fraga. Igor Fraga. And uh, has sent himself towards the back, unfortunately. That promotes us up onto the podium now. And we can set after the Volkswagen up ahead. And uh, now we're really making a charge towards the front. But um, as always, keeping an eye on the tyres. Always keeping an eye on the fuel. Fuel is not a factor. Um, it's really a tyre limiting race, this one. You can see the, the front tires are really suffering in this Audi TT. It's a front wheel drive car, meaning the front tires are doing all the turning, but they're also doing all the accelerating, and the rear tires are like literally on holiday. Like no tire wear on the rears. It's, it's really quite interesting to note that. So perhaps this car isn't great in high tire dig scenarios because you know, the two tyres up front are doing all the work. It's not really balanced tyre wear, is it? Uh, like it would be perhaps in a, in a rear-wheel drive car. But we get through anyway. We're into the lead of the Grand Prix. Um, we got past P2, but P1 made their second stop of the race, and now we're responding a couple of laps later, going onto the soft compound tyre. We don't need to refuel. We've been pretty good on fuel relative to those around us. I feel like I'm still short shifting in my driving style. A lot of people are maybe revving out the gears more than I am. So that's something I need to continue to develop in my driving style on this game. I'm so used to Formula 1 games. We have to shift up at the optimal time. Otherwise the engine overheats and you just, it's not as efficient. But uh, in a, you know, semi road going race car. It's, okay, it's a race car, but it's kind of like a road car with the way that the engine is. You can just rev it out and there's no real consequence for that. Anyway, we rejoin. Still, again, fighting with a Mercedes, but this is a different Mercedes. This was, this guy was maybe contending for the lead or at least he's one of the fastest cars on circuit. He actually has the fastest lap of the race against his name. He is on the soft compound tire, but uh, I feel like he's probably put on his softs a little bit too early and he'll be possibly fading away towards the back end of this race. Whereas we have the youngest tires in the field. We've got the fastest tires in the field and now we're gonna see if we can win this race. The, the two leaders are only just up the road so I'm well and truly backing myself to get this one. We've worked so hard over the course of this Grand Prix. No mistakes, no major incidents really to speak of. So I have done my best job to really you know, clean up my driving. I feel like it does help as well the fact that I'm not racing super slow people. I, when you're racing like lower rated drivers, sometimes their behavior is a little bit unpredictable. They'll break super early and that honestly catches me out more often than not. But um, yes, yeah, so I'm doing my best to, to lower that aggression level, I, I suppose. Anyway, closing up to the back of the Subaru, we have a major tire advantage over him. And we're going to utilize that as we pull out of the slipstream and set our fastest up of the race. 1 minute 36.8. Not the fastest up overall, but um, hell, I'll take a race victory over a fastest lap as we get a bit of a punt 
into turn one. Sends us a little bit wide, but thankfully there is no penalty against our name. That was probably the thing I was worried about the most. If, if I rack up a penalty or two here, then that's really going to make life difficult towards the back end of this race. So, you know, not only do I need to catch this guy, but I need to build up a little bit of a gap once I get into the lead because my tyres probably will die off quite a bit on the last lap, which we are heading on to now. So, one more lap to go. Only a few kilometres left in this race, and the race leader has himself a 5 tenth penalty. So, I'm guessing that was for track limits through the final couple of corners. He's going to slow down on this back straight. Meaning this could be a very easy overtake for the win. We are in the slipstream though, heading up into turn three. He goes defensive, heading into the hairpin. So we're going to go around the outside here. Hopefully he doesn't punt us here at the hairpin. He does give us a bit of a touch there on the radar, which escorts us wide. It's a little bit cheeky there from the uh, Mitsubishi. But thankfully no penalty for us. And... We are going to soar off into the distance and win this race. Replay. It's not much in it. It's just the slightest of touches, but it does send us wide. And uh, the thing I was worried about the most was getting a penalty for that. But yeah, all we got to do now is keep it together for half a lap. And this should be the race victory. Our very first in Manufacturer Series. Oh no. Oh no. You're joking. I can't believe I've done that. All I had to do was go around a few corners and I couldn't even do that. Missed the breaking point by literally, I don't know, 10 meters tops. Tire wear. Dirt on the tires, all of the excuses are being thrown up in the air, but at the end of the day, we have just thrown away a race victory. That's where I normally brake, and then that's where I applied full brake pressure. So, yeah, just went in too deep. A combination of factors, tire wear, the fact that we went off circuit, there was a bit of, you know, maybe a tiny bit of dirt on the tires or something. And the fact that we just broke too late. I feel like if the tires were in a little bit better condition, or if... There wasn't, you know, marbles and dirt on the tyres. We might have been able to just keep it on the road and keep the lead. But, you know, those small factors did make a difference. And half an hour of... Oh, half an hour of hard work and it's just all undone by one small mistake. And it's going to be P5 at the end of the day. What a cruel mistress motorsport can be. Even, even the virtual side of motorsport can be very, very cruel. At the end of the day, it's P4. Uh, one of the guys up ahead had a penalty, but it's, it's, it's little consolation, isn't it? Like when you're staring down the face of a victory, you got one hand on the trophy. All I had to do really was guide around the circuit for a couple more corners. And this is one of the silliest things I've done, to be honest. I was so mad at myself uh, that I just had to jump in and, and do another race. So that's exactly what I'm doing. We're going for redemption here in race two. Uh, this one is offering more points on offer for, uh, you know, your point, your finishing position. So that tells me that this is a slightly better lobby um, for with better drivers. Thankfully, this time, we can change our tyre compound. So we are, are going to try a different strategy for this one. I'm going to qualify on the soft compound tyre and just try and lead from the front. I've done so many... Well, I've had so many races lately on GT Sport where I'm having to, you know, overcome adversity. This time, I don't want, you know, any external factors. I want to get a good qualifying lap. I want to start well. I want to pull away and not see a single soul for the rest of this race. But, um, yeah, in this qualifying session, I was doing something quite sweaty. I've been watching, you know, Super GT. I've been watching, you know, Key 25. He does a lot of manufacturer stuff. And, you know, this is a, a legit strategy. You know, fuel burning switching to fresher tires midway through the session and then having a really good shot at a pole lap towards the end of the race. And I was very surprised that no one else did this, really. Maybe one or two other people, but the majority were all just going gun-ho on their tires. So that, I guess, is the difference between, you know, B-class drivers and A and S-rated drivers. Like, literally, this is a staple um, in, you know, S-rated lobbies. You know, every 
<laughs> every competitive race in Gran Turismo looks like Monza 2019 qualifying where everyone wants to stream. But um, you know, I feel like the driver level isn't quite there, even in this lobby, uh, to the point where I need to stream in order to be fast. I feel like we don't we don't need that. We just need to get a clean lap in. Once we get into the higher echelons of lobbies, that's when we need to worry about those smaller, finer details. Um, but at this point, I just want to get myself to that level, bridge that gap as much as I can. We are going purple to this lap, which is very encouraging. So, at best, we should be looking at maybe it's not five starting position for the race. If so, I will start on the sauce and look to pull away as much as I can as we go through the final corner. It looks like a pretty tidy lap. There has been no mistakes to uh, mention. So, it will be pole position for this race. <laughs> Yes! Yeah! Yes! Yeah! Thank you guys. Oh! My time. Time. Here we are for race two. It is time for redemption. We are not mucking around in this one. We are going to leave from the front. Hopefully not battle anyone, although that might be a little bit difficult given that this is a higher rate and lobby, but away we go for our second race in the manufacturer series. Let's see if we can bring glory to Audi. Change the uh, livery as well, just for extra good luck, I suppose. But turn one is pretty fortuitous for us. I think P2 ran out pretty wide. Someone else got blown up behind us as well, and we find ourselves leading by two and a half seconds as we round out the first of 16 laps here at this Austrian Grand Prix. We're starting on the soft compound tire as we qualified on. And then I feel like going forward, we'll probably switch to the hard, try and defend our position, and then finish out the race relatively strongly on the medium tyre. This is our fastest up of the Grand Prix. Uh, and it's coming on lap two with a bit of fuel on board. But um, yeah, you would probably expect that your fastest lap would come when you're on the faster compounder tyre. You can see the lead is out to 3.7 seconds. It reminds me of a young Sebastian Vettel in his heyday. Although it really annoys me that when people do say that in his heyday. I feel like Sebastian is still a very, very good driver. I think he just gets a bit unlucky or tries too hard sometimes. Much like I do. Our la last race. But anyway, through to the final couple of corners, you can see. Um, keeping it nice and tidy. I want to bank this fastest lap if I can. And uh, really just solidify this uh, position in the race that we're in. Uh, the fact that we're pulling away so much gives us a bit of flexibility later on in the race. So what I'm going to do is actually stretch out this stint a little bit longer than what I probably would have planned. We're stopping at the end of lap five, and we're gonna go on to the hard compound tire. So um, I, I let the cars behind me eat into my lead a little bit. This is something I, I love to do when I'm ever I'm leading, is just to use that margin that I've built to give myself fresh tires, to give myself more of a strategy advantage later on in the race. We're on the hards, and we've rejoined four seconds behind uh, the Frenchman there. And he makes his stop just a, a couple laps later. But um, yeah, the margin from us to the car behind is coming down. Uh, Rene 350Z is on the mediums and he is closing in quite rapidly. Now, what I didn't want to do is let him get too close, close to the point where it's going to get slipstream. You can see here it's got down to 1.9 seconds. Um, so we are going to box at the end of this lap and fit on the mediums to round out this race. Now, the mediums should easily do five laps to get to the end. Actually, four laps that they're going to do. So, again, we're just uh, letting letting him get tantalizingly close, um, but not close enough that he's going to get slipstream. So, uh, we should be able to pull away from him and uh, really attack this final stint on the medium tire. As we rejoin, gap is still 2.1 seconds, but we come to the end of the race on... Oh, lap 13 and the gap is 5.6 seconds he's now on the hard so that just kind of demonstrates how much slower the hard compound tire is um it's it's durable kind of yes that's half true but it's it's very slow as a tire so um kind of want to minimize that time spent on it but rounding the final corner 
There is going to be no bottle this time. We are going to win our first race in the Manufacturer Series. Rowdy, get in there. <laughs> yes, boys. So there we go. Redemption is ours after what was a shambolic end to the first race. I worked so hard to get myself through the field and then just th to throw it away on the last lap it was just such a, a horrible feeling. Um, I, I, I couldn't describe it. Was, it was, I just had to make up for that and I feel like we did more, more than make up for it in a, in, a, in a lobby that had slightly better drivers. So um, I'm happy with that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to see plenty more racing game content. Really enjoying, you know, diving headfirst into Gran Turismo. We are getting better each and every day, but we still need, we still have a long way to go, is what I'm trying to say. And uh, hopefully you guys can continue to join me on this journey. Until the next one, I'll see you next time.